anvils next to buy my tools or make my tools it's one of the things that people are always asking about where do I get an anvil what do I need for an anvil what's a good anvil what's a bad anvil lots of questions to ask about anvils like so many things that have to do with blacksmithing there is simply no easy answer to the question what I think I need for an anvil may not be what you need for an anvil we did talked when we were doing tools about early blacksmiths probably using a rock for an anvil. It's not a good solution. There's a reason blacksmiths don't use rocks for anvils anymore. They were terrible anvils. What makes a good anvil? Maybe that's the first thing we ought to talk about is why is it, what characteristic, there's really one major characteristic that makes an anvil better than some of the substitutes. This is a ball bearing. I wish I had a bigger ball bearing, but this is all I could find. And you'll see off that anvil how high that bounces. Off the railroad track, it doesn't bounce so high. Off my regular anvil that I use, it bounces nice and high. We refer to that as rebound. That means that when you strike a piece of work with a hammer, of most of the energy you want to be absorbed in the work. Some of it goes clear to the anvil. You want that energy reflected back to your work, not absorbed by the, what you're using for an anvil. And that it should go without saying, but the dirt floor of your shop has no rebound. A pile of dirt would make a horrible anvil. Now we've actually used this stump as a special forming tool a few times, but does that really mean it's a good anvil? Yeah, it's better than the dirt, but no, it's not really a good anvil. There's no rebound there. So what you're really looking for is a big, heavy piece of iron or steel. That's the key thing to an anvil, is it has to reflect that work back. Steel is better than iron. Early anvils were wrought iron. They mush over time because they're not as hard as steel is. An anvil like this, which is an old wrought iron anvil, has a steel top, and that's what gives it its rebound. This anvil is cast steel. It's all one piece of steel, and it was cast. Cast steel, not cast iron. Cast iron makes a terrible anvil, and I'll explain that here in just a minute. Now, I realize that not everybody can afford a real anvil. It's hard to find. Anvils these days are going for four or five dollars a pound for some beat up used anvils. New anvils can be ten dollars a pound or more for some really nice ones and there are some really nice anvils out there. I think at the end of this video I will try to do a screenshot online if I can remember how to do that and we'll look at some of the new anvils that are available for sale. But that's prohibitive for some people. A thousand, two thousand dollars for an anvil is way more than a lot of people can afford. So what do you do? One of the classic anvil substitutes is a hunk of railroad track. This is actually fairly small track. This is one that I found in a my in-laws garage I believe when they were they had both passed away and we were cleaning out the garage for the last time. So this is one he had had. And who cut it, who shaped it, I don't know. But I've tried to do one of these once, and after hours and hours and hours over many days of cutting torch and grinding, trying to get a nice looking anvil, I gave up on it because it was never really all that good. But this would work. It's got better rebound than the dirt or the stump. And it would be a functional anvil. It's small. It probably only weighs about 25 pounds. But it would work for, for an anvil if that's the best you can come up with. And you wouldn't have to have a horn on it, which would be a lot easier to make. It's trying to shape that horn that's a problem. So it's certainly a doable project if you can find a hunk of railroad track. Now don't go trespassing on railroad property looking for scrap bits of track. It's trespassing and it's stealing and the railroad doesn't take kindly to it and they do prosecute you if they catch you. Plus people die every year trespassing on railroad property. But sometimes you can find railroad track at estate sales 
auctions. Some of your friends may have some. Maybe you know somebody that works for the railroad and can get some. Or you can go to the maintenance yard and ask for the maintenance crew. Explain to them what you're looking for. They might take pity on you and give you a hunk of railroad track. Or they might trade you one for a case of beer. It's hard to say. But don't go out walking the railroad lines stealing railroad property. Bad idea. On a simpler note, just any big hunk of scrap steel isn't a bad anvil. Standing up on edge, this is a 4x4 four four hunk of something. I don't know what it is. I don't even know where I got it. It was probably bought at scrap price, or it was probably something somebody had laying around that they gave me. Who knows, but it would be cheap. It's twice the weight of the railroad track. If you can find a way to anchor it to a stump, you could build up a block that held it up to about here, and that's a good surface to work on. And it's plenty for a lot of small projects. If you mounted it this way, and if you're a welder, you can weld feet on it and bolt it to a stump. But that's not a bad anvil face right there. It doesn't have a horn, but there are ways around that as well. So just a big block of steel is simple, it's easy, and it's probably cheap. And it's probably even better than the railroad track or better than some of the other makeshift anvils. This is a little anvil, and it's an older small anvil. It's not one of the new ones that you find oftentimes online for $30 or $40, $50, something like that, that are made out of cast iron. This one, I believe, is cast steel. It behaves much better than a cast iron anvil would. And it just, to me, acts much better. I haven't cut it open, but there's nothing to imply this is cast iron. Not a bad little anvil, but it's light. Maybe 15 pounds. It's just minimal use. You could anchor that to a stump and it would get you by. I probably paid $50 for that. And I use it down in the wood shop if I need a little anvil for setting some pins or something like that. But it's not one I use in the blacksmith shop. Something else you might use as an anvil are tinner's stakes. Now, some of these are not very heavy. This one's not bad. That's fairly stout. And if you had a big block of steel and something like that, you have your horn and something you can shape over. And it would give you some options. This little thin stake would never take up to big pounding. But if you're making little de delicate hooks, that could be a very useful supplemental anvil. This big flat stake, if you set that in a stump, that really is probably what a lot of our ancestors were working on when they first made iron anvils. Probably weren't any bigger than this. Now this is an antique. It's European. It's largely wrought iron. I think I see a weld line, so it has some sort of a steel top through here. But it's still soft enough that it's, it's been bent over a little bit. And I'd like to straighten it, but I'm a little nervous about reforging the antique. This is a stump anvil. It's got a spike so it can go into a stump. And that would have been a very useful small anvil. You're not going to make big hardies and sledgehammers and things like that on it, but if you're doing small projects, something like that would work. On the other hand, you also pay antique prices for some of these really cool little stake anvils like that. So it's not a real cheap option. But if you get lucky and find something like that, it would be useful. Swedge blocks are not really anvils. They don't have a good flat surface, but they can be useful for various shaping and other activities. And if you happen to come across a swedge block, even though you don't have a proper anvil, they're nice to have. But I don't know that I would consider them useful as your primary anvil surface. Speaking of swedge blocks, Roy over at Christ Centered Ironworks just hand forged a swedge block the other day. It's a three part video series, really worth watching. It's a little swedge block. It was about nine and a half pounds when he finished it, but it's very nice and all done by hammer and hand and no power tools except for the grinder when he cleaned it up. So head over there and take a look at it after you're done watching this video. Now, if you're really desperate, even this big old truck axle is heavy, it's solid, as long as you can anchor it so it stands upright, either in a big stump or set it in concrete, 
that's a good solid surface to work on and if you could anchor it sideways somehow that would be a substitute for an anvil horn it's big it's heavy it's solid it's not going anywhere and these little holes in the for the flange might actually come in handy for punching but it wouldn't be the great anvil because it's just odd shaped that pretty much leaves us with real anvils or conventional anvils maybe would be a better way to put it now some of these smaller make-do anvils or simplified anvils actually have a place nail makers frequently had little tiny anvils and specialty setups that looked nothing like this because they simply didn't need this it wasn't part of their craft but nail making and general blacksmithing really are somewhat different a good anvil is fairly substantial it is solid it has good rebound it has a hard steel face a horn is really really nice although not all anvils have horns a hardy hole and a pritchell hole are nice although again a lot of older ones didn't have those those are fairly new remember we are living at the pinnacle of the development of blacksmithing equipment it took thousands of years for the anvil to be designed and evolve into what we know of as an anvil today so trying to go back in time and reinvent the anvil doesn't do us much good it's been done for us if you can afford a real anvil get a real anvil this one is wrought a wrought anvil forged with a forge welded on steel top it weighs 308 pounds I think it's a Peter Wright although it doesn't say Peter Wright it's actually got a hardware store name on it and I don't remember when I bought it if the person I bought it knew more about it than I did but it wasn't cheap then and an anvil that heavy won't be cheap now especially one with a relatively fat fit flat face although I need to resurface that and that'll be a whole nother video of cleaning this up and getting some of the dings out of it this anvil was a new anvil purchased from old world anvils I actually bought this for my old shop when I had two forging stations and sometimes had somebody else in the shop with me never had an employee but every now and then and I thought maybe I'd teach classes but that didn't work now it's just handy to have the second anvil so no I'm not ready to get rid of it this is a more classic European style anvil with a round horn on one side and a square horn on the other side and that's really handy I like these if I ever decide that I want to mess around with swapping anvils I might use this one as my primary anvil because there's a lot to be said for this two horn system this is a cast steel anvil so it's all one piece and I don't know if it's hardened throughout or just surface hardened I'm, I'm not real sure it's 110 kilograms so that's a little over 220 pounds that's a really nice size anvil but not cheap you're probably looking at two thousand dollars or something and again we'll try to look at their website here in a minute and see what they're going for now this does not have an upsetting block the upsetting block is actually a, a separate piece of 4x4 four 4140 four, steel welded to a plate that is bolted to the top of the an the stump before the anvil was set on top of it and it works as an upsetting block but the European style anvils with an upsetting block and a little table are some really nice anvils and if I were buying a new one I would really consider that now this anvil is just sitting on a block it has been bolted in the past but actually the way that upsetting blocks done is doesn't want to fall off but this is movable and here it's on an unlevel section of floor this would be terrible to work on you want your anvil to be solid and immobile any of these makeshift anvils that we talked about that were 15 to 20 to 30 pound hunks of steel are made way better by solidly mounting them to a base the heavier the base the better I like a big wooden base this one is set three feet in the ground it's made up out of pressure treated timbers and it's glued and bolted together set three feet in the ground and then the anvil is chained to it now unfortunately my chains have gotten a little bit loose something has shifted stretched compressed something the bolts are bending something and this anvil is not as solid as it once was and I can now move that so another video besides surfacing is going to be remounting this anvil and I got a better idea for how to anchor it down solidly but anchoring your anvil solid really helps 
even if the stand is portable, a big heavy stand helps. But a portable stand, if you're working over the horn, every hour or so you've got to put your anvil back where it started because it does move around the shop. It gets really annoying. And he's got this great Steve Fontanini anvil. These are spectacular new made anvils and not cheap at all. They're very expensive anvils but they are really nice. This anvil will last many lifetimes and many blacksmiths. Now something I forgot to mention that I meant to in the makeshift anvil department is a heavy sledgehammer. If you can find a 10, 15, 20 pound sledgehammer and find some way to set this in a block without the handle would be fine, that isn't a bad little tiny anvil surface. Again, that's probably as big as a lot of the anvils people were using 2,000 years ago. There just wasn't the technology to forge up these big anvils and that would work. If you can figure out a way to mount it this way and this surface is big enough to work on, what you end up with the eye hole might be a usable hardy hole for something. I don't know, just an idea. I've used sledgehammers sitting on the forge table for doing little tiny forge welds and we mentioned that briefly in one of the earlier videos. So they are functional and they will work and the heavier the better. So anyways, that's my take on anvils, I think. The better an anvil you have, the better your work will be, the more you will enjoy your time in the shop. But if you can't afford to buy a conventional anvil, there are options out there. You can find something that will work. If you can save your money, if you can tell everybody for Christmas I want a donation towards an anvil, and maybe you can get 50 or or $100 that way, maybe you can get several hundred, maybe you can work a little overtime, one way or the other, you might be able to scrounge up the money for a, a more sufficient anvil. How big? If you're just starting, a 100-pound anvil is probably plenty big. And depending on what you're doing, a 100-pound anvil will last you your entire blacksmithing evolution. Uh, it's, you don't really need these great big anvils. They're nice. I like a big anvil. But a 150-pound anvil really is enough to do just about anything you'll do in most blacksmith shops. So I think next what we're going to do is we're going to sit at the computer and we're going to try and look at some websites that sell new anvils and I will just try to document where those are. I'm not going to review them because I don't own their anvils and I don't have enough time to tell you exactly whose is the best and what I would buy if I were shopping for one, although I'll probably offer some sort of opinion. But do your own research and talk to some other people as if you're interested in buying a brand new anvil from one of these websites. So we're downstairs in the basement office and I thought I would take a look at some of the anvil things that you can find online and give you a very brief opinion on some of them but mostly it's just to introduce you to the fact that there are lots online if you can afford to pay shipping or if you can go pick these things up from some of these dealers. So let's crawl into the computer real quick and see what they got. So let's start with Old World Anvils. This is oldworldanvils.com and there is a link in my description that is a I paste every time that includes Old World Anvils. And I will try to add all of these other dealers if they are major dealers. Some of them are already in there. Then Old World Anvils has lots besides just anvils. They have fly presses, hammers, gas forges, hydraulic presses, uh, he maintains and builds certain power hammers, but we're talking about anvils, so let's go look at what he has for anvils. Uh, two horn anvils, Austrian anvils, some little mini anvils, which we're not going to worry about too much. He even has a 4x4 four four stake anvil. Uh, this is really a, a small anvil. It would be absolutely minimal, but it's $140 free shipping within the USA 
And that's not terrible. It's pretty much just a hunk of 4140, and if you can weld, you could buy a hunk of 4140 and make one of these for yourself. So that's a, an option if you're extremely budget limited and would be way better than the cast iron anvils that some people sell online. But this is his, the big uh, workhorse. This is exactly the anvil that I've showed you in my shop that's my two horn anvil. Uh, mine's the, the 110. But they also make it in a 50 kilogram, which is 118 pounds, for $850. That is not a terrible price. It's a little over $8 a pound, but these days that's what you expect to pay for an anvil. And these are outstanding anvils. If you go up to the 110, it's now 1600 and that's pretty reasonable. These Austrian anvils are pretty unique. I don't know if there's any big advantage to some of these odd shapes you see on these things, but they're not real big anvils. Let's see, you can get a Nope, no, they're bigger than I thought they were. The, the 250 kilogram, 580 pound anvil is just under $4,000. Of course, you're going to have to pay shipping unless you can go to a conference or a workshop or drive out to their shop, wherever it is, to, to find them. But I would go online and I would look at these if you're interested. And they have other anvils. We're not going to worry about looking at every single thing on every single site. Now, the Fontanini anvils. I just showed you one that was in a friend's shop. These are outstanding anvils. They are guaranteed for life, not to break. But they are not cheap. A 250 pound anvil, unfinished, which means you have to grind, polish the face, dress the edges, but it's ready to do that. And, you know, plan to spend a day, maybe two days, dressing up your anvil, and you get a really nice anvil for. Sixteen hundred dollars for a two hundred fifty pound anvil, or for about eighteen hundred dollars, you can get a a finished one. And he also has four hundred sixty pound anvils. Really nice anvils. If I were buying a brand new anvil, the Fontanini might certainly be the way I would go. Nimba anvils has been around for a little while. They make some very nice anvils. Let me see if we can find some prices here. So the Gladiator Anvil, which is a 450-pound uh, anvil, that's a big anvil, $2,500. That's a pretty good price right there. Their Centurion Anvil is $260 for $1,800. That's in keeping with the, the other anvils. And their smallest anvil is 120 pounds for just under a thousand dollars. Reasonable prices, not not any steals. If you're looking at a bargain anvil for a dollar a pound that's a nice perfect anvil, you're probably not going to find it. And you might get lucky at a the state sale or an auction, but don't hold your breath. Centaur Forge, they're one of the bigger dealers in the country and they sell a lot of things that are meant as farriers anvils. And a farrier's anvil isn't a bad anvil. You can certainly work work with them, but they tend to be a little bit lighter. In they're, they've got a fairly good sized face, but they're a little lighter back here and a little lighter up in here. That one actually looks pretty good compared to a lot of farrier's anvils. Um, let's see if I can find a more classic farrier's anvil. Here we go. So this has some odd things on it, a little table off the horn and an odd hardy hole here in the horn that doesn't make much sense to me. But they're fairly narrow waisted and have this kind of swoopy horn and real thin tail back here. So they aren't ideal for blacksmithing. Again, if you can find one, you get a good deal on one, I wouldn't turn it down. But if you're buying a new anvil, I would not look at farrier's anvils as your first choice. I think you can do better than that. There's some more classic European two horn anvils, 110 pounds, $665. And they aren't, it says this is drop forge, so this is a forged anvil. 
It's it's nothing particularly pretty or special, but it would probably be a pretty good anvil, and that's not a bad price. Blacksmith Depot has a similar selection of anvils. They have this TFC brand, which I'm not familiar with, but I've seen it around, so it's nothing new. And I trust the folks over at Blacksmith Depot. Oh, I'm sorry, this is Pay Tool Company. Uh, Pay Tool Company and Blacksmith Depot have some of the same anvils. But I trust Amy over at Pay Tool. She doesn't sell junk. So if she's selling these, they're probably pretty good. She also has some Petting House anvils, which are a really good German brand an anvil. And some of them are quite small. This little silversmith anvil is too small for a blacksmith anvil. But a 275 pound Petting House, also sold under the name Rigid. If you're finding the, the Rigid anvils online, they're probably looks like they're probably Pettig House manufactured. So $2,300 for a 275-pound anvil. It's in, kind of in keeping with what you expect to pay for an anvil. The TFC two-horn, 100-pound anvil. That would be a real nice beginner's anvil, and if you never get into big work, it would be all the anvil you would ever need. Yeah, that's not a very big picture. Uh, face is 4 inches by 17 inches. That's very good. 9 inch horn. Um, it's got a 1 inch hardy hole, which is a nice size for a hardy hole. So that's a pretty pretty good deal on an anvil as far as I'm concerned. It's a little over $6 a pound for a brand new anvil. You, you're paying that much for used anvils these days. These may be one of the better deals. Uh, Jim Hoffman over at Hoffman's Forge, and I assume you've got to do some some finishing. These are cast H13, so it would be good tough steel. I'm not sure why H13, they don't get that hot, but he's a fairly small business, but he's found a way to contract for these. Um, $845 for a 110 pound anvil. A little over eight dollars a pound. That's a great deal for a brand new anvil. And this little colonial pattern anvil is about the same price. Now this this one, the the, the fancier one, is a little bit more. It is no, oh, that's that's the three hundred twenty-five pound anvil for for twenty-two hundred dollars. I think these are probably outstanding anvils. He's a good smith, does some really, really fine work. He has a YouTube channel. I, uh, he'd be worth checking out. I like watching Jim's videos. So here's Blacksmith Depot. I'm sorry I misled you earlier about um, Pay Tool and Blacksmith Depot, but they both have the Petty House anvils, and they're both in generally the same price range. And they have. They have this Perrin anvil I've never seen before, so that's a new new brand I haven't seen. 66 pound for $625, so that's about $10 a pound. Although it does come down, the 220 pound two horn anvil is $1,300, so that's not a bad, bad price for a 220 pound anvil. It's pretty reasonable. But there are other new anvils out there. Uh, this is not every anvil manufacturer. There are some small companies like Jim Hoffman that are making anvils, and I just don't know about all of them. I would look around. And then there are is eBay. eBay's got lots and lots of good anvils and lots and lots of really lousy anvils. Here is a it says 20 pound solid forged steel anvil. If it's a forged steel anvil, 20 pounds for $50, that's 250 a pound. That's a good price if you're looking for a little tiny anvil. I don't know that that's what you should aspire to, but if you're doing small work and you're thinking about one of these little cast iron anvils, a forged anvil might be better. It says hardened forged step horn steel, milled surface. I don't know anything about it. I don't know anything about the seller. As a three-quarter inch square hardy hole. That might be a reasonable little anvil. I don't know. It's uh, 
it would be tempting to to buy one and try it out if I needed a little anvil, but I'm not desperate enough for a little anvil to do that at the moment. There's a 149 pound vintage Peter Rice anvil for 405. That's a good price if it's a good anvil. My guess is it's going to be hard for you to get. Uh, they, well, not terrible. They want $97 to ship it. That's a lot of money, but it's not outrageous. And that's, I'm assuming it's calculating to my location in Colorado. If you're closer to them, it's in Pennsylvania. The shipping would be less, obviously, or hopefully. It has says it has some weird dings and some areas of the horn are damaged. And you need to expect that with old anvils. Old anvils are rarely going to be pristine and perfect. 55 pounds solid or iron anvil. These are the cheap cast iron anvils that you're probably going to break the horn off of. The face isn't hardened properly. It's going to ding and dent and that reflects on your work and you're going to be frustrated and unhappy with it before you know it. I would avoid all of the cast iron anvils if you can, but if that's all you can come up with, it's better than no anvil. Although a uh, big chunk of steel that weighs 30 or 40 pounds it's probably every bit as good, if not better, than the cast iron anvils. Near mint hay button, 104 pounds, $1,000. That's a... They're charging collector's prices. It seems a little high to me. Uh, if I really wanted it, I suppose I'd try to justify it, but I, I don't think I'd uh, be that interested. This is a 111 pound anvil for 315 Now that's not a bad price. $77 shipping. That's pretty reasonable. The face looks fairly fairly clean. So there are some anvils on eBay. It's very sway-backed, so you deal with it or grind it, one or the other. But there are some things on eBay that are not horrible anvils. And some of them are going to be really hard to ship. Here's a 560 pound German anvil for $4,000. That's a, a fair amount of money and a pretty impressive anvil. And if you were close, holy cow, this one has free flat rate shipping coming from Austin, Texas. So free shipping makes that a better deal, but it's still a pretty expensive anvil. Well, there we have a pretty good look at a lot of different stuff that's available online. And there's way more than that if you look. I can't vouch for all of those. I think if you're buying from Fontanini Anvils or Jim Hoffman or Blacksmith Depot, Kane & Sons, Paytool, Centaur Forge, Old World Anvils, those are all excellent anvils and you will be getting your money's worth. I realize they are quite expensive and you may need to still do some scrounging around locally to try and find a used anvil or an anvil substitute. But if you're looking for new anvils, they are out there. If you're not in the United States, I am sure that a lot of these anvils are still available. A lot of these are imported from Germany, Czech Republic. Some of them may even be made over in the, uh, the East, in China, Thailand, something like that. I'm not real sure. But I think a lot of them are coming out of Europe. So if you're in Europe, you probably have even better access to anvils. I realize if you're in Australia or someplace like that, it can be quite difficult to find good anvils, and anvil substitutes might be what you have to find. But if you look at farrier suppliers, they often import anvils. And just, just look around. Look in your area. Talk to the other blacksmiths in your area. I'm sure you can find something. But thanks for joining me in the office. We'll get back to the shop and finish up this video real quick. Well, I hope that helps answer some of your questions on anvils, anvil-like objects, things that can be substituted for anvils. I did mention cast iron. Cast iron makes a terrible anvil. Uh, cast iron, like they make skillets out of, is good for skillets. It is not good for anvils. It is prone to cracking. A lot of the cheap cast iron anvils that are sold online have voids in them. I've actually talked to people who said they managed to break one and they found just junk 
that was being melted down to cast this stuff that never completely melted and it was just still some sort of a, a part left inside the anvil. So it's, they're not really very good. I watched somebody online who was really bragging about his, how great a deal he thought that anvil was and the one he was showing already had the horn broken off. It was something that I got the impression was fairly new to him that he had bought new and he had already broken the horn off of it because it was just cheap cast iron. Now cast ductile iron would probably be okay for an anvil but not as good as a cast steel anvil or a forged anvil with a steel top. And there are lots of brands of anvils out there, lots of historic anvils. I can't even begin to weigh in on all those. So there's lots of research. There's even a book out there on anvils and maybe I'll I'll try and uh, find a link for that book somewhere and add that into our information. But anyways, in the meantime, I hope you can find something you can use for an anvil. It's going to make your blacksmithing life a lot better than forging on the dirt. I hope you liked the video. Hope you found it useful. Hope it answered some questions. Love it if you'd hit that subscribe button. Share the video with your friends if you're so inclined. But find yourself something to use for an anvil. Start a fire and forge something. Stay safe, wear your safety glasses, and we'll see you later.